Uthduna is at the same time a relatively grounded creature design, but also incredibly bizarre and almost unfeasible morphologically. However, I think I found a way where it fits into a somewhat reasonable uh, taxonomy. The big thing of note that is kind of contradictory about Uthduna as uh, an animal is that it has really, really highly developed fore and hind limbs with, you know, fully formed claws on them. Um, it has five digits on each of them. This sort of long extending digit is a true finger. And its hind limbs are also very well developed in a way that is similar to modern uh, four-legged animals. However, Uthduna's skull anatomy is incredibly basal. Um, and beyond that, it is much more similar to ray-finned fishes than it is to lobe-finned fishes. In fact, it's almost identical to the skull of the Piraruku or Arapaima. It has this huge uh, protrusive jaw that is a uh, common trait among ray fin fishes, but it's kind of unprecedented to look at that sort of structure in lobe fin fishes. Most lobe fin fishes get extensions out of their jaws if they do at all um, by uh, a joint at the back of the skull, like in coelacanths. Uh, and lung fishes don't really stick their jaws out very much, period. But we'll get to where Uthduna sits on the big phylogenetic tree in a minute. Uh, in terms of its anatomy, uh, the scales are super, super cool. Uh, a lot of this is extrapolated because the scales are very similar to those of the Piraruku. Uh, and so I've reconstructed them uh, with the part you can see here being, uh, you know, very drawn from the game's morphology, and this sort of bony plate here being inferred from similar uh, morphology and Piraruku scales. However, I really can't settle on whether these scales are leptoid or ganoid scales. Now, this is less related to shape than it is to the actual chemistry of the scale covers, um, but here's an example of leptoid scales. These are in alligator gar. And here's an example of ganoid scales. These are in arapaima gigas, the piraruku. Uh, and really, what trips me up is I can't really tell if this sort of reflective sheen that sits on top of the scale where it's not overlapped by the other ones is made of dentine or ganoid. And that's because in-game, these scales are, being, are described as being incredibly tough. Um, but they're also described as being relatively, like, shiny and beautiful. Uh, and both of these compounds are, you know, fitting enough for that description to classify the scales either, but there's really no evidence one way or the other in the game. One thing that it does mention specifically about the scales that I've illustrated here is that there are water channels that flow up through them and hold water to keep the animal's tissue moist. Uh, the tissue is described as being perpetually wet as long as the animal is alive, it holds water, um, and also incredibly strong, which uh, is probably due to this network of really like advanced crisscrossing connective tissue that surrounds this uh, bone at the base of the scale. What's worth noting is that not all of Uthduna's body is scaly. The soles of its uh, hands and feet uh, completely lack any sort of scaling. However, when you start getting to the uh, pinky pad on the forelimbs, you get a slow transition from small little pebble scales into these larger, broader body scales that run down the length of the finger, uh, which is very similar in structure, but not identical in structure, uh, to these big sort of rays uh, along the animal's body. Now, what Uthduna's uh, cilia, or I guess tentacles, are uh, likely derived from is these little structures surrounding the fins of both ray-finned and lobe-finned fishes. These are called fin rays. Uh, and what really gave me that idea is that in modern animals, the fingers are adapted fin rays. And in Uthduna, what is this gigantic tentacle, which we see in almost identical morphology across the entire body in all the places where we find the fins of both ray-finned and lobe-finned fish, um, but these giant sort of elongate structures that are similar to the digits. They are also adapted fin rays. They're covered in this sort of bizarre fiber uh, that the game refers to as cilia. But that's not super specific, and it's more descriptive of structure than any sort of chemistry. What we do know about the cilia is that they support this giant membrane that sits over the body of the animal when it's alive uh, and when it's wet. The closest real-world example for a, you know, full-body membrane coating like this is the slime of myxinid fish. Now, myxinid fish are incredibly basal. They don't even have jaws. They're some of the most primitive living fish that are around today. And just like Uthduna, these myxinid fish use their slime as a defense mechanism. Now, in general, Uthduna seems to be largely defending itself against injury from potential prey items, whereas these myxinid fish are using their slime to avoid predators. So these animals produce an incredibly thick mucus that, you know, expands and so almost solidifies on contact with water, just like presumably whatever Uthduna is making that allows it to make those big sheets of slime uh, that are supported by its cilia. And they just kind of get it all up in whatever's trying to eat them in the mouth, uh, on the skin, and it impairs mobility and makes it really hard for these animals to breathe. In Uthduna, it's definitely serving more as protection for the skin. It might even be trapping moisture so that the animal can move around on land. 
because this animal is decidedly very tied to the water. It has these great big gill plate structures. It has loads and loads of gill rays. Uh, and while, like an arapaima, it might be uh, able to breathe air uh, in order to live in low oxygen water environments, its anatomy suggests, and as well as its behavior, uh, that it is a solidly uh, aquatic animal, even if it does do some supplemental hunting on land. Uh, in my observation, I've seen Uthduna go after loads and loads of uh, land animals in addition to its uh, primary aquatic prey, uh, which includes gajau, spear tuna, basically anything that is big and visible uh, and swims in deep water. But on land, it goes after Puragil, uh, it goes after Doshaguma, it goes after basically everything in the Scarlet Forest. It's not an apex predator just in the sense that, you know, it eats the stuff immediately below it and doesn't get eaten. It is uh, an animal with a diet that includes just about everything else in its ecosystem. Another thing that's really interesting about Uthuna's anatomy is that it only has one row of teeth. And this is really bizarre even among the fish-like monsters of Monster Hunter. Gyrotodus, for example, as well as many of the other uh, newer Piscine wyverns, and I think Plesioth, have two rows of teeth inside their mouth. This is not uncommon among uh, large and primitive lobefin fish uh, predators. Hyneria, for example, has uh, an outer row of narrowly spaced uh, sharp teeth and then an inner set of widely spaced uh, large teeth that are much larger than the outer row. We kind of observe the opposite in Gyrotodus, but I think it fits as an example. Beototus has a much more pronounced condition where it has kind of this super, super tiny reduced group of teeth in the middle of the mouth and then huge ones uh, sitting near the outside. However, Uthduna just has large teeth on the outside of its mouth. I have like a million photos uh, of the mouth of this animal trying to figure out if it has any sort of secondary row of teeth because so many of the Monster Hunter monsters do. Uh, but it seems like it's entirely absent here either because Uthduna belongs to a very distantly related group of tetrapods uh, or it just, like, de-evolved them. And neither of those are totally out the window. Another thing about Uthduna's eyes is that they're uh, somewhat specialized for nocturnal vision. They have a tapetum lucidum. They glow in the dark, just like a lot of the animals do. Uh, but I thought it was interesting to note. Also, they have these, like, kind of funky muscular eyebrows, or, sorry, eyelids that can uh, close over the uh, eye. Anyway, let's talk about where this animal sits in relation to the other groups of wyverns. This is my sort of mock-up uh, phylogenetic tree that is based on just very few species and very few characteristics. Uh, and this represents a hypothesis that I will test and attempt to disprove in order to, you know, get a better understanding of how these animals are hypothetically related. So Uthduna very clearly has a jaw, and that puts it very solidly within the jawed fishes. Uh, and then from there on, I've started grouping them based on, like, how many claws they have on their limb digits. Uh, now, this might seem arbitrary, but it is really, really bizarre how early in the family tree of vertebrates claws appear in Monster Hunter. The working theory for vertebrates in the modern day uh, is that they first evolved sort of modern limbs to uh, have enhanced mobility in choked channels of forest waterways. And this is very consistent with where we find early vertebrate fossils. They're almost all in those little forest channels uh, where they would be using limbs and sort of elongate bodies to push themselves through tight passages and like muddy forests and they would take food from the surface of the water. But they really didn't need claws to do that. Claws give you real good traction when you're trying to like dig into something. In the modern day, the only animals with like true claws are the amnium, which are animals that uh, have an egg that is adapted for uh, terrestrial reproduction. The Piscine wyverns and uh, Uthduna, as well as a couple other leviathans like Gobel, have really bizarrely developed claws for animals that seem to be reproductively tied to the water. Keep in mind that most of these guys still have gills. Now, claws are useful for terrestrial mobility in certain environments. The fact that Beototus specifically has this giant claw on the front of its fin, which it shares with Gyrotodus that it is very obviously closely related to, but not Plesioth, indicates to me that terrestrialization within the uh, tetrapodomorph fish of Monster Hunter, which then gave rise to, you know, your modern leviathan, occurred in an environment where claws were much more necessary for mobility than it did in the modern day. However, the body plans of these early tetrapods are very similar, so they could still be moving through clogged channels. My hypothesis is that immediately after this sort of basal terrestrialization event, there was some kind of glaciation that occurred and caused an ice sheet to cover a large amount of the land and incentivize sort of these same sorts of grabbing claws and complex hands that we see in Uthduna. Additionally, that explains what Beototus is doing up in the Horfrost Reach. So yeah, that's most of what I have to say about Uthduna. I'll probably make a longer video on my YouTube at some point, so go check that out.